What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here with another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. In the previous episode, we had just sort of run around and done like nothing. I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it for you. The last episode was a little bit of a filler. It was kind of one of those episodes from any anime or Dragon Ball Z or any TV show really where like the main characters are just off doing random stuff that makes no sense along the lines of the real storyline. It's one of those chapters in our story now. In the previous episode, what we had wanted to do though is kind of look around for castles that might be taken, but going up against Rodox, here's my fundamental problem. I have a couple of issues with Rodox. First and foremost, they're pretty much unbeatable in a siege. Anybody that goes up against Rodox will know that sieging is pretty much, they're like a fish to the river basically, when it comes to holding a castle. Oh my god, we almost got run up on right there. And what is Hugu doing? He's using this opportunity to avoid this huge patrol. Alright, whatever, Hugu. I see how it is. You could have jumped in on that. I bet 200 of us could have taken his 140. But as I was saying, the number one thing about Rodox is that they're not great on the field. They're not great attacking castles. But when it comes to holding castles, they are absolutely just a terror to be reckoned with. They're a force of nature. I really want to fight this 447 battle and see if we can pull it off. Let me have a look at what we've got in our force. And I bet we could make it happen. I mean, he's got a lot of units. But he can't guarantee that they're all going to deploy at the same time. He's got 150 top tier units. That's a tough call. If he had like 100 top tier units, I'd probably be fairly certain that I could take it. But this is one of those battles that I'm like, eh, it's a little edgy. It's a little bit on the edge. Everything else he has, though, is worthless. I think I would probably be careful about it and do it with 200 men. If I had one more lord with me... Like, to maybe put me up to 150 or 200 men, I think that would be a battle that would test our strengths a little bit. But as it stands right now, it's too close. It's a waffling fight. It is a fight that waffles heavily. And while I do enjoy a lovely savory waffle every now and again, I don't know if you guys do this, but when I eat waffles, like, I have this thing that I do where you have to fill each of the cells with, like, you have to get the syrup in each of the little cells equally. Otherwise, it's just not okay. And then I also, this is another, like, little foible, I have to take each of the cells and I have to cut along the squares on the side. I can't like go through the middle of the cell. It bothers me and if I do go through the middle of a cell, it has to make like a perfect triangle. I don't know if that's because I took way too many geometry classes or something and it's just turned me into someone that's just a complete and total fan of the isosceles or, you know, perfect symmetrical designs. I don't know. I have no idea what caused that. It's kind of one of those weird OCD things that has arisen as I've become an adult. I don't do it with other foods. I've met other people who have similar problems, like when they have their plate full of food, none of their food can touch, so like their corn has to be over here, and they have to have like an inch in between that and their bread, and then their bread has to have like an inch between their bread and their meat, or whatever it is that they're eating, like their, <laughs> their meatloaf, or whatever the main course is. You're not gonna club me right now, looter, you are way, way out of your league right now. We are in like the big leagues, and you are like in the littlest of little leagues, you're playing t-ball, we're up on, although they may kill off that guy right there because he's a lancer. Lancer's only, only, he's the only guy I'm worried about. How would that feel? Your commander's like, you know what, I need you to stay in the back while we fight these looters. I'm sorry, you're the only Lancer that we have with us. You're a lower level than everybody else in our force. He's like, oh, but I'm top tier too. Well, that's, a, that's being a little bit liberal with the definition of top tier. Believe you me. Eh, don't outrun me, shirtless man. Why is there just this giant group of men <laughs> walking around shirtless in the middle of a field? Like, what... <laughs> What are they hoping to accomplish out here? It's like, back to the pile! <laughs> what? Like, is there really any call for 39 men to be out in the middle of nowhere, just shirtless? There we are, so we've defeated them. And I guess we'll capture the looters, just in case we come across a random ransom vendor. That was tough to say. My tongue definitely did not want to get that one out right there. The random ransom vendor. God, whatever. Let's have a look around, and I think I'm going to do a little ride around... The Outer Kingdoms. Let's go to Dirham and have a look around, see if we can't find ourselves a new shield. There's a lot of things that I need to task myself with right now that I've just been leaving by the wayside. And unfortunately, it's come. It's time to come back around the turnpike and grab some of those things off the ground. So, let's go to the tavern first. And there's nobody here that's going to be useful to us. We also want to get some better gear for all of our secondary... Oh, he wants us to join the campaign. Well, maybe we will do that then. Where's he at? Ghoulie's going on the offensive. And he's close to Zagush. And that means he's probably going to cancel this call. He seems to be stuck in some kind of AI loop where he goes between Zagush and Azugan or Distar. And then he cancels the campaign every single time. This has been a recurring factor. It's been a big problem. Oh good, Peshmi's under attack right when I need to go do something. Dicks. I hate Rodox so much right now that I really do just want to slaughter the hell out of them. I wish you could execute lords like you could in Britainwalda. Oh god. Well, if he decides to hit us back, there's nothing we can do there. 
all I can really do is hope that he gets himself into trouble with some of these other lords. Let me go talk to Brula and see if I can get him to jump in with us. Let's send him to... Did I do the wrong thing there? May I suggest a course of action? I need you to go to Peshmi. Unless you deny me. There it is. So he's going to go to Peshmi. And I think if we can gather up everybody here, we'll make a much better force. We've got somebody near Peshmi. I want to ask you something. No, we want you to go to Peshmi. And if we could trick him out, we may be able to fight with like 190 men, which would be way better than fighting with... If this guy would just come in right here... Well, he doesn't have any Mamluks. He has a bunch of Lancers. And so this is what I'm talking about. You can drag people back and off some of these locations pretty easily. And so you hope that they'll go around and follow somebody else around. If you drag them far, than, far enough out. This is how I tend to preserve my locations. Although, Peshmi, how poor is it right now? Poor and struggling. I could recruit volunteers, but we don't have the room for them. I could also fight the battle right here and get all of the farmers on my side, but unfortunately, I don't know how that's going to work. Oh, good. They're all hiding in Halmar now. You guys are cowards of the highest quality. And I realize that there's a certain irony in saying that while I run in circles trying to get away from the enemy, but still, cowardice. Not something that I look kindly upon here. What do you have? Ooh, he's got sharpshooters and sergeants. He might be of some help to us. I haven't saved in a while. Let me go ahead and do that. And let me see what happens here. Will he jump in? I wish, I wish so much that we had the little lines that are in Total War that told you if somebody would jump in. Because there's been so many times that I've joined these battles right here thinking that they're only like a thumb's width away from each other. And then they don't join the battle. But then when I go fight the enemy on the same terms, like let's say I went and fought Gravith with one guy of his right over here. It seems like they always jump in. And it's one of those confusing things about the game that I've never been able to figure out. I think from right there he should jump in with us. Maybe? Hey, you. Jump in with us on this battle, dick. You are on our side, are you not? Make it, let's make this happen, please! I need allies. Come with me. Come with me if you want my people to live. I realize you probably don't care about that very much, but... God, all these guys just running away. If we consolidated, this would be perfectly fine. Come on, guys. Do you like me? Maybe he'll follow me. Let me suggest a course of action. I don't want to follow you. God. All right. Well, I'm going to try and send him back to Peshmi again. I, the AI sometimes just doesn't think about anything other than solid numbers. Like, they should look at my renown, too, versus the renown of the king and something. I'm not going to go answer the call one more time, unfortunately, because I've got to sit here and kite him off of Peshmi, as always. I do wish that we could take him, though. I don't think we can, unfortunately. I know what might work. If I could bait him by Halmar, sometimes people will ride out and fight him. Nope, they seem to be being intelligent in this case. Well, I think I'm just going to abandon Peshmi then. I don't really care that much. Let's go answer the call and figure out. We need to go find out where Ghoulie's at. He is at Distar, which means he's probably about to cancel this call. God. One of those stupid situations where the game seems to be broken within its own AI. Oh, I failed it already. Well, that time it appears to have worked. Well, the last five or six times he canceled it, so... It's difficult to tell what you want, Ghoulie. It's one of those boy who cried wolf moments where I just don't trust him. I guess we could do an all-or-nothing throwdown right here. Let's do it. And so the villagers have joined the battle on our side. We will fight you to the end. We have 156 versus their 447. Not going to work out in our favor, but what we can do is we can limit the usefulness of their sharpshooters just like this. Especially since their sharpshooters are going to be the ones that we have to watch out for. So let's put the infantry right over there. And the guys along the edges are going to get themselves into trouble. Let's have them compact then. I want them to come fully around the corner before we get into this fight. And then the last thing we need to do is figure out how not to take too many lances and arrows here. And I think I could get away... Oh god, I've made a mistake. Yeah, we're stuck now. Well, I've been betrayed by a door jam here. And there goes Peshmi and all of our troops, unfortunately. 
We could conceivably leave right now, but our morale is so low that we're never going to make it. We did a little bit of damage. We lost most of the farmers. But I think if we could get our frontline troops onto the field, we could hold this spot. And I have to do it. So it's one of those things that I just have to adhere to. We have to defend our land. Otherwise, I feel like a punk. I can't let somebody else just sit here and take over my stuff. I have a duty. I have a duty to lay here. Let's get everybody behind the wall. We'll send our infantry out, and all I can really hope for at this point is that things maybe come out in our favor after a long engagement. Cavalry, get your charge on. I don't know. Almost caught a spear right there, and I can guarantee you I'm going to catch a magic bolt like any moment. I'm going to try and help out with these sergeants over here if I could actually hit anything. The problem with this is that they've busted my front line, which now means... Oh, God. That guy turned around in a heartbeat. That was inhumanly fast. Yeah, we're not even making a dent in him, unfortunately. Oh, my God. And then he managed to glitch out and fight us one more time. We're going to pull back. We have to leave 49 soldiers. Are you serious right now? I'm feeling pretty disenfranchised with Mountain Blade Warband at the moment. Feeling pretty irritated with it. I don't know why he's decided only to come after my stuff, but... The inability of my fellow lords to back me up, along with the fact that there's just a situation you can do nothing about, and that we just lost everything in that situation... I think I'm going to break off with the Serenids. I just don't care anymore. I frankly, I hate this kingdom. I hate fighting with Rodox all the time. I absolutely loathe fighting, and I'm not angry right now. I want to make that clear. I'm not, like, angry or anything. I just, I hate fighting Rodox all the time because I feel like they're a cheap, cheesy army. Oh, my God. And now there's bandits running around everywhere. Amazing. Somehow there's 58 deserters running around over here, which is great. Let's sell off some of these goodies that we had. I did. I slipped up. That's this one of those cases where you got to be careful what you wish for. I asked for this. I asked to have a reset, and it's what the game decided to give me. So what we, what we found out right now is that I actually didn't want that, and that it would frustrate. You must return your bought goods before selling that. What? Whatever. Is my warhorse still okay? My warhorse is still fine. We can assume... i got to wait for this group of bandits to go away because they're being assholes and they're just camping. They're being that guy on the Battlefield 4 battlefield. And so let's figure out where we want to get some new troops from. First and foremost, we need to sell off some of these random people that are in our group. Yep, there it is. Let's go break our contract, too, with the king because I hate this kingdom. I really don't like playing with Serenids. I don't like their positioning. I don't like any of this. This whole... This sucks. This is weak. This is weak and whack and I hate it. It's not going to let me keep any of my land, unfortunately, but we do have a lot of money. And we can decide where we want to go from here. I'm getting tired of fighting Rodox is what it comes down to. Rodox is one of those armies that you never take any ground against them. Like, you absolutely never take any ground against Rodox unless you outnumber them or you're running your own faction so that you can Zerg ball them. Because their defense is so thick that essentially everything that goes up against them gets cut into ribbons. Where am I right now? I'm not even paying attention properly. Let's go to Cherie's. Which we didn't capture, by the way, because the king bugged out down there like an idiot. And at least it cleared that problem out. I mean, that was an issue that we did need to have handled in between here and there. So, I didn't want to walk around here. I want to go to the tavern. Take me to the tavern. I need booze to make my sorrows go away. Mercenary swordsman. Yes, I will hire you. Nothing there that's going to be useful. Let's swing up and on into... Nords has declared war against Vagars. That is a terrible idea for Nords. I can promise you that that's not going to turn out in their favor. Let's go to Halmar and see if they got anything there. I probably should have stopped here while I was in the vicinity, but I forgot to do so. This guy, or is he just a... Oh, he is. He looked like a villager, but he's a ransom broker, so that's fine. We can get rid of all these ridiculous looters around us. Okay, so 43,000 dinars now. Luckily, we're in a monetary position where it's not too bad having to reset ourselves. We could go to our castles and grab some of the garrison, considering we're about to break our contract anyways, and I think that's what I'll probably do. 
Let's manage our garrison here. Some Serenid horsemen. Let me figure out what I want to bring with me first and foremost. I definitely want the Mamluks. The Lancers, not too concerned about. They can stay. Swati and Sharpshooters, I'll take. I'll also take... Do we have any Vigir Sharpshooters over here? Or Vigir Marksmen? Doesn't look like we do. We've got a bunch of guards, and the guards tend to be okay. So we'll take the Serenid guards for a bit. Take the Serenid horsemen, since we can convert them into Mamluks rapidly. Let's go up to Maliurg and see who's up here. It looks like everybody's headed to... Oh, I forgot. I closed that dialogue too quickly. Let's look at our reports and we'll figure it out. So our morale's at 49, which is bad. It's pretty terrible. It's pretty awful. Let's grab the remainder of our troops, though, before we go anywhere else, because I get the feeling these are all going to be sacrificed to the Gods of Mountain Blade Warband once we decide to break off our alliance with this faction. We've got enough Mamluks and things right now where we can go roll over some bandits for a bit to make things okay anyways. Nord Warriors, yeah, we'll bring them along because we do need some front linemen. Ah, Marksmen, I knew I had some in here somewhere. It's like when you're looking for that pair of socks in the back of the drawer that you know you have around somewhere. Like, it's the middle of winter, but you haven't worn those socks since last winter, and so they've been pushed all the way up into the back of the corner. The Sharpshooters right now and our Marksmen, those are the socks. Let's grab that Horseman out of there. Take a few more guards, too. Alright, we're back up and running. This does leave us very, very weak and uncovered, but since we're breaking up with our lord anyways, it's him, it's not me. Let's go to the Serenid Sultanate and figure out where he's going. Last you heard, he was at Halmar. Okay, well, let's go there. If we see any other lords, we'll try and track him down. Oh, there he is right there. And I know you guys are probably going to scream and be like, no, why are you doing this? Well, oh yeah, we killed, I forgot, I was like, why are you giving me money? You should be angry with me right now. Has your oath become so burdensome? Yes, indeed it has. Alright, so he's not that grumpy with us. He's only at a minus three. And we're once again back out on the open road. I think who I'd like to fight for now... I don't know. Let's go get... We're going to spend an episode here. We're going to take a little bit of a break because you shouldn't jump in between relationships too rapidly. I'm going to apply my breakup strategy in real life to my breakup strategy here. I don't want to join in with anybody at the moment. Like, right after. I don't want to have buyer's remorse in just a minute. Let's go get into a couple of fights. We'll occupy ourselves for the rest of the episode just wiping out bandits for a bit. And once we do that, how's our financial report looking right now, by the way? Okay, so we lost just about everything. That's cool. Whatever. We knew that was going to happen. And in walking away from that, let's have a look one more time. And I want to see what my right to rule is as well. Right to rule is at 39. Now that we're not with a lord, what we can do is let's take Metheld. And we're going to ask her if she knows that we aspire to be the queen of the realm. And then what we can do is we can ask her to support our cause. And if we do that, she'll go out and for a few weeks she'll be gone from our party. And she will ride throughout Calradia and proclaim us the rightful king of the land. Once that's been taken care of, we're going to get some freebie right to rule. Let's fight these groups of bandits down and in here. We need the morale before people start deserting. And there it is, 102. We've got a lot of cavalry right here, so this should be over... God, that is a huge cavalry force. I'm pretty proud of myself right now. I didn't expect, and I say that kind of like tongue-in-cheek, but I am proud of myself right now because usually I have trouble sticking with things, but in this LP I've been sticking with people too long that I haven't been truly enjoying. So we'll run around, we'll find another faction. The Nords have been recovering a little bit, and I feel like if we lent some weight to them, we might be able to do some cumulative damage against Vagirs or something. I don't know. Maybe we'll fight with Vagirs for a bit, be a freelancer there, finish like a campaign. I don't know if we lose Right to Rule when we left that kingdom. It seems like that might be one of the punishments for doing so, because Right to Rule is not something they hand out easily in this game. It is very difficult to go from like 0 to 100. 100 is the max for Right to Rule, and I know very few people have ever actually made it there. You've got to ride around in a lot of campaigns to get yourself to that point. But if you're at 100 Right to Rule, you can pretty much do whatever you want in any circumstance. We done here? All right, let's get our morale back. Four morale from that battle. Five Taiga Bandits to make a little bit of money on the side. There are some Manhunters there. I'm not going to take them. Let's go find a few more Taiga Bandits to mess with. Hopefully big groups. That's what I would prefer. It's like the big 35s that are in there. Or small groups that are right next to each other that will add to each other's conflict. Ah, there's a 58. That's what I'm looking for. The 58. We may take a casualty right here. Who knows? 
But then again, we've got so many men that I feel like we're gonna put hoof prints right in the middle of their foreheads. We're gonna give them a hoof-shaped scar, so forevermore they will say Mad Dog McGriddle was here. We are gonna have a lot of javelins flying around though, which does lend me to the thought, yeah, there's a Mamluk down already. That's what you gotta worry about, those skirmishers. They always get a couple hits off before anything actually happens. And then, as you can see, the battle's gonna shift in our favor after that first volley. It's sort of like back in Roman times. They used to throw pelums right before the battle would start, and that's kind of your spike in casualties right there before the actual battle is joined. And then you start to see what the real butcher's bill is gonna be at the end of the day. It's kinda nice being free of my bond right now. It's, it's pretty sweet. I feel very... It's like when you get out of a bad relationship, like you're dating somebody and you get out of it, and then the moment you get out of it, you're like, yeah, I feel pretty good right now. I think I'm gonna go to the pa I'm gonna go to the pub this weekend. I think I'm gonna hang out with some buddies that I haven't seen in a while because, you know, the girlfriend didn't like them or whatever, so you didn't... You kinda limited your time. You know how it goes. Those little sacrifices. But anyways, you feel sort of free afterwards. You can readopt those relationships. We got eight morale out of that one. I'm gonna try and get myself up to, like, oh, I don't know, maybe 70 or 80 before we go anywhere else. Simply because I feel like that's a good plan, as we're shopping for a new lord here. And who else is down here? Let's go check and see if the Sea Raiders have been up to anything up here. Got time for like one more battle against these guys. Scout it out a bit. We haven't cleared out this location in a long, long time, and I feel like it's in our best interest to kind of ride around. I'm not going to kill them first, though. My plan in so doing is to sell off some of these captives. Hopefully there's a ransom broker here. Good, there is. Also some chickens. So if you've been feeling hungry, dive right on in. I was thinking about this other day and like what language do cats and dogs think in? Because you know they've got to be having thoughts in their cute little heads. And yet you don't really know what language they're doing it in. So for example for me, I think thoughts in English. Or I would assume somebody that like is French would think thoughts in French. Because that's just how I vocalize my internal dialogue. But what language are they like meow 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 in their head? Or is it just kind of like motorized instinct. That was driving me crazy yesterday just thinking about it. I was like, this is really one of those thoughts that I shouldn't have brought up, I think. Mind blown. Deshavi I don't like. We don't need her anyways. There's a wandering Ashik. You guys said I didn't need to learn poetry or anything, so I'm gonna back off that proclamation right now. Or that job application. And so let's go and sell off some of this loot. We made a little bit of money off those Taiga Bandits. We're almost at 50,000 dinars. This may be the most money I've ever had because I tend to spend it as fast as I get it. We also need to equip some of our secondary people. That's what I was talking about as well in the previous episode. Those were those secondary tasks that I'd been leaving by the wayside and we had talked about turnpikes and we had just gone completely off the plot. But anyways, let's grab this helmet because I'd like to give it to somebody and we've got the extra money to do so anyways. Let's grab any of the nice useful loot that we can afford. Got that bassinet right there. I think a helmet upgrade period would probably be nice. So we'll give people some helmets. And then they don't have a really good selection of body armor right here. So we'll try and find that elsewhere. We also need to buy ourselves some food. So we'll get the grain. We'll get the smoked fish. And there it is. Let's head back over to the Sea Raider landing. And we're going to wipe out some of these bigger groups maybe. Hopefully they'll turn around on us and try and fight us. We've also probably got some upgrades ready to go. Yeah, seven Mamluks. 24 there. But nobody else is ready to go, disappointingly enough. That's a nice head you have on your it looks like nobody else jumped in on this, which is disappointing. God, that is some muggy weather right there. We are looking at the weather that you would see along the coast. Definitely out like Monterey, Point Reyes type weather, if you come from California. If you're from Britain or something, I don't know. This is like, whenever they show anything from Great Britain, this is what they make the weather look like all the time. And I don't know if that's true or not, but... You know, I don't want to jump to conclusions, so I'll leave it up to my British followers, or those from the UK, I guess, to be more specific, to enlighten me as to what the weather's like there. I've never been. My sister's been out to the UK. She spent a bunch of time out in Ireland, and a bunch of time in London, too. But I have never made it across the pond, as my old colonial cousins. I am the colonial cousin. I don't know what I'm supposed to call you. Anyways, as my, <laughs> my old family members across the sea, as I've said before, I had an aunt that just moved here from Wales and got her citizenship, but... You know, so I have direct family still from across. But I don't know how that goes reverse. I don't know how to refer to you guys. It's one of those things that I don't have a term for it. I wish I did. But I don't have one of those tongue-in-cheek phrases for you. Alas. This is taking a little too long for Sea Raiders. It's only 25 of them, guys. Come on now. Get the lead on out. And they're like, all right, but you wanted us to sell this at market. I forgot to tell you that every single one of our saddlebags is loaded up with lead right now. We're trying to move into the gunpowder era. I'm trying to defy logic. 
He lost a Mamluk. Every time, there's always that Mamluk. We'll capture seven of these guys because they sell for a reasonable penny. And in the next episode, we'll continue wiping out some enemies and we will find ourselves a new lord. I promise you that. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerd Castle for a weird episode. And I think I may have been a little too brash here, but we'll find somebody else to hang out with. I wasn't pleased with the Serenids anyways. We had made progress there and we had found that we had what it takes to have our own castles and our own fiefs. So we'll do that in another location. It won't take us long. Take care out there, everybody, and farewell.